Good morning. Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. Um, I pray that the Lord will bless you as you worship the Lord today, listen to His Word, and starting your day with Him. Let's start with worship. Hope for the weary, strength for the faint, fountain of mercy. Peace to the restless, breath in our lungs, lover and friend. You're the anchor 
Morning again. You know, I have a question to ask you today. Have you ever struggled with pride to the point that it hindered you from obeying God? I'll ask that question again. Have you ever struggled with pride that it hindered you from obeying God? I remember a story. <clears throat> I was in the gym. I'm not in the gym often, but I was in the gym one time and I met, I saw a friend who was there, right? And so he asked me how often I go to the gym and how often I get to bike because I you know, I get to bike with some of the friends that he knows. And so I said, you know, three times a week maybe. Uh, and he asked me a question. Do you, have you ever biked 100 kilometers? I said once. And then he asked me, oh, so you still get to bike, you know, maybe 50 kilometers every time, three times a week. Um, and so that would be about 150, right, kilometers per week. And so, you know, you know when you feel like you want to uh, impress a person and you want to... I don't know what they call it. Parang you just want to be keep, keep quiet so that you're, you you look good in the eyes of the person. So I said nothing. In other words, I made him think I was still biking three times a week for fifty every time. Okay, one hundred fifty total. And it's like I was convicted after. I said like, oh man, that wasn't the truth, right? And so because of pride, because I wanted him to think uh, good thoughts about me or at least a good reputation about you know that I'm strong and all that. Nah? And I think sometimes that happens to us. That pride, maybe it's just me, no? But I think a lot of people go through pride and as a result, it prevents them from obeying God. You know, there's a, there's a story in scripture, um, a man in the Bible who almost missed God's miracle because of his pride. In chapter five of verse one to 14 in second Kings, there was a man named Naaman, let me read. Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of the master, of his master, and highly regarded because through him, okay, the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Long story short, he was told to go to Elisha the prophet. So in verse 9, Naaman, look at, look at this, read this. So Naaman went to his, uh, with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and, and, and your flesh will be restored and you will be clean or you'll be cleansed. Naaman initially refused to follow Elisha's instructions to bathe in the Jordan River because he felt, this is what he felt, he felt that the rivers of Damascus were way superior than the ones like in the Jordan. So verse 11 and verse 12, look at this, listen to this. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana or Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could not I wash in them and then be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Galit na galit siya. He was so upset. Verse 13, look at this. So Naaman, Naaman's servants, went to him and said, Father, my father, okay, it was a sign of respect. It was a, it was a sign of honor. My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, uh, some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So, okay, I guess in the prodding of the se servants, he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Aren't you thankful for people around you? And they might be, you know, you might be older than them, more mature than them. But listen, God does use people who may be younger or you're more advanced or mature or older or maybe richer, right? Or have more wealth or more education. It does not matter because God does use people around us. In fact, the wise servants, okay, the servants were quite wise actually and said, hey, you know, have you thought about this? And I want to encourage you guys. I want you to be thankful. Be thankful for people I, around you. I hope you are. Because God does use people around us to encourage, to inspire. 
sometimes to even rebuke us. Parents, you know that feeling when your kids ask you a question and you realize they were right. See, this pride almost prevented Naaman from receiving the healing that God wanted him to have. Obedience honors God. Obedience honors God. And a few takeaways in, in, in that line of uh, thinking about obedience. Number one, obedience requires humility. You see, Naaman would have missed his, uh, his miracle. Good thing his servants reminded him, hey, you know, what will it take? I mean, or how much, you know, you just dip yourself in the water. That doesn't take a, a whole lot of effort, right? So it took humility. And see, some of us, we have a hard time obeying God because we think our ways are better. We think our thoughts are better. We think our plan B is better than His plans. Obedience requires humility. It takes humility. Number two, obedience requires faith. It does require faith. Naaman had to have faith that Elisha's instruction would actually lead to his healing. You see, when God gives us an instruction, it will require faith from, from you and me to say, Lord, okay, I don't see it. I don't fully understand. I don't see from point A, I don't see point Z, right? But I'm going to trust you. And it seemed illogical and counterintuitive to dip himself into the water of Jordan, which was not as clean as the ones in Damascus, but it was the command. And so some of you here, that's your situation. God has a command. God has an instruction. God wants you to obey. And, and may it be that you'd come to him, Lord, give me faith. Help me to have, give me grace to be able to trust you, to obey Third thing, partial obedience is not enough. Partial obedience is not enough. Naaman was initially willing to follow Elisha's instructions, but bathing in the, the rivers of Damascus. But that wasn't the, the, the plan of God. It was in the rivers of Jordan. And see some of you here today, maybe. Lord, I'm going to trust you with this. I'm going to give you this amount, but not the whole amount. Or Lord, I'm going to obey you in this area, but maybe not this whole area. But, and so, listen, negotiating with God, yeah, you can do that. But you see, His purpose will always prevail. And so, I want to encourage you to trust Him and to believe that His plans for you are what is best. That when we fully obey, right? When we fully obey, not just partial obedience, we will see the miracle in our lives. Number four, obedience brings healing. It really does, and that's what happened here. Naaman got his healing because he followed fully what the prophet said. I'll go back to the question. What is God asking you now? Right now, what is God asking you to do that you're having a hard time obeying? It's a good thought because it might be a, a career move. It might be a, a business to start or maybe to leave a relationship that you know is not honoring to God. What is God asking you? And maybe pride is in the way. Hey, I know better. Hey, maybe I, I can do this thing. Or maybe I can pull this off anyway, God. What is God asking you now? that you're having a hard time obeying. Why, why is that? Approach God with how you feel and trust Him that His plans are way better than our plans. And so I want to pray for you right now. Lord, I just pray for some of us here today listening. Maybe if that's our situation. You're asking us to do something and you have planned something out. But Lord, whether it's pride or maybe we don't fully understand, that's why there's doubt. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we quash and we destroy every doubt in the name of Jesus. And Lord, now we ask that your grace would surround them. Even, Lord, courage to be able to make that right decision. We may not fully understand everything, but we know that you know everything and that you fully understand everything and that we can trust you in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Jesus. You're the anchor. 
the Lord has blessed you through the time of worship and uh, through the time of the Word. May the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and every single day as you live your life for Him in His honor and for His glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.